All right, well, we are just after five and we have a quorum. Do you know if uh, Lisa's coming? She's not. She's not. So I'll read the standard opening statement. This is the Northampton Conservation Commission meeting for the 24th of May, 2012. The commission is a group of unpaid volunteers who work to protect the natural environment of Northampton. We are concerned with the eight interests defined in the Massachusetts Wetlands Act. Our duties also include open space acquisition and management, but primarily focus on carrying out the provisions of the Wetlands Protection Act and the Northampton Wetlands Ordinance. We operate in a way that's consistent with open meeting law requirements. All meetings, dates, times, and agendas are posted in advance. We invite public comment during our meetings. However, we ask that the public limit their comments to their issues uh, uh, to uh, issues that are directly within our purview. Uh, today's agenda includes a request for determination of applicability to determine whether a driveway paving is subject to the Lutton's Act or the Lutton's Ordinance. Uh, location at 119 Turkey Bay Road. Also, uh, update on the status of the Mountview Conservation Area, uh, an APR application on Fair Street extension, uh, update on open space acquisition and review of staff issued permits. Um, first item is approval of minutes for. Uh, April 12th, which Sarah sent in the packet. Actually, that's the third item. Yeah. Um, oh, that's true. Uh, well, let's let uh, uh, public comment. I assume that since you want to make a public comment, um, you can make it now or you can wait till later in the meeting when there might be more members of the public here. Uh, good morning. Uh, say your name so uh, Alita can write it down. My name is Alicia Ralph. I live at 755 West Hampton Road and I'm on Northampton's Reuse Committee, which is the newest name for the Solid Waste Task Force. And the DPW and the Reuse Committee are throwing a reuse roundup June 2nd at Smith Vocational High School, 9 to noon. It's going to be an extravaganza of recyclables and things that you normally can't recycle, like styrofoam, rigid plastics, which you can leave off or take what you find that you find attractive. Um, there will be building materials. There will be educational things inside the cafeteria. And it's going to be a great time. And it's so important that we reduce the things that we send to the landfill, because the landfill, about this time next year, will be closed for good. Thank you very much. Does that include TV and computer monitors? Uh, this particular thing, the Jackson Street School did their electronics, uh, their traditional yearly raise money for the public schools last Saturday. Uh, but uh, there are regular. Okay. So hang on to your goodies. Yeah, well, I'm clear now. I'm trying to show there'll be a lot of goodies. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Any other general uh, public comments? Not related to any specific case? All right, then I'd like to uh, welcome, uh, I think I've, I've introduced everybody except Alita, uh, to Stephen Seller. Have you met Stephen before? I've no. seen him that formally. Um, Stephen is the newest member of the commission. Um, and I'm going to ask before we break up that we take a couple of minutes and just go around and say a little bit about our backgrounds and interests so that you have some sense of uh, um, who it is that you're joining uh, on this August uh, Commission. So um, now the approval of minutes for uh, April 12th, which Sarah sent around in her packet. Uh, anybody have any motion? Approval of minutes. Second? Second. Uh, any discussion, modification, changes, comments on the minutes? Good to me. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So good. Uh, first item is uh, request for determination of applicability to determine whether driveway paving is subject to the Wetlands Protection Act or the Wetlands Ordinance. Uh, applicant is William Yenner, 119 Turkey Hill Road. Hello. Sir, have a seat.
So, we've uh, seen the case. You want to give us a, a, a summary? Uh, yes, very briefly. It is a, uh, talking about my residence, uh, uh, I would like to pave an existing gravel driveway that was installed at the time the home was built about 23 years ago. So it's the question here is paving an existing driveway. Uh, I can't and picture I did where this is. Provide a map that showed its yeah. proximity to the creek and the wetlands. Look down here. How far up Turkey Road is this? I can't, I'm just having a problem. Uh, you mean in terms of Sylvester Road? Yeah. Well, it says Turkey Road. Yes. It, well, from the corner of Sylvester Road and Ryan Road, it's maybe a quarter of a mile. Okay. Yeah, do we have a, an aerial? Yeah. I just could I this did a good job of articulating what we're trying to do in the space, but it didn't put it in context. Oh, I see. Yeah, right. Right, okay. I'm trying to picture the house. Planning to pave also the common drive, or just just my own just your own personal driveway. my own personal driveway. It, this is, doesn't involve the the common roadway. Okay. Just got to get that projector going. Oh, we need a light, and then the light it off again. I think it's green, which is kind of. Uh -huh. Yep. Smart board to turn itself on. What type of uh, audio, audio commands? Are you removing the existing gravel to a certain depth and then paving? Or are you paving over the existing gravel? Paving over what's there. Yeah. So you won't be excavating? Uh, no. It's a cute, you'll keep the, the footprint of the driveway more or less. I'm just wondering about you know, whether there'll be materials that would we'll ha have to be moved out of the driveway footprint. Is that, and I understand the existing footprint will be where the pavement ends up right. as far as um, work around it in terms of um, disturbance. No, I don't, I don't expect to do that. So it's, uh, here's Jim's variety store down here. And this, is a, this is the common driveway right. that goes up and then goes to the left and the right. And the house is where the, the cursor is. Uh -huh. And the red is mineral health conservation area. Common drive comes off of Sylvester. And the only resource area is the river front the stream. The river well, front there's area is uh, also there. there's no other red line. Yes, there is. Uh, there is. It's in the buffer zone. Okay. A BBW that's yes. kind of marked the river. Questions by the commissioners? And Sarah, your comments? Uh, this almost seemed like something that maybe would be exempt under the Wellness Protection Act, but there isn't an exemption for it. But it's essentially not really a change from existing conditions. Or it's, right. it's, it's already degraded. It's already right. degraded in the permits. And is the topography make sense that if it's disturbed at silt fencing, or is it isolated from the wetland by the common driveway? It's isolated by the common driveway. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. There's an obstruction there. Okay. Move to close. Move to close. Second. All in favor? All in favor. Closed. We're in discussion. What do you think, 
Sarah's recommendation is a negative determination can be issued by checking box two. Sounds good to me. Is that a motion? <laughs> yes. Second. Anything seconded? Any further discussion? Volunteer? Vote? Uh, I, I, <laughs> my, I guess my only thing is that is is that we want to make sure that we want to make sure that if that the work does take place from the driveway so that we don't get a situation where the materials are stockpiled or there's disturbance. I mean I don't you don't anticipate that that will happen, so I guess you know, is that can we add a condition that we're checking box to yeah. yeah, so basically the work has to be has to stay within the footprint. Stay within the and that materials are not to be stockpiled right else is it not to occur outside. Since it's all just, within the right. Just so that even you know, when you hand that off to the contractor then they, that they see that piece of paper from the Conservation Commission okay. saying that, that the work has to stay within the footprint. Where they're going to use the existing driveway as a base. Right. Soon they will just come in and lay the black top right on Right. Well, I, I assume that will be most of it that they'll roll it and yeah. even right. it. But then just I just want if they decide, if they decide, if they look at the material and they decide that there's too much you know, dirt or it's the material's the wrong size, that they don't decide, oh, we'll scrape this. So, right. mm -hmm. I mean, it's not likely to happen, but just yeah. so just to protect yourself. Modify the uh, motion to include the condition that the work be limited to the footprint. Second. 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 discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So voted. Okay. Thank you, sir. The uh, uh, communication from you will be. I'll send this to you um, probably Tuesday or Wednesday. And there's no appeal period, so you can get going anytime. Okay, good. Okay. Thanks for Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. Item on the agenda is an update on the Montview Conservation Area. Downey handed out a map and um, comments, or descriptive uh, comments on each of the zones. Could, is there any chance, or do we have an extra for the public we can even share? If not, that's okay. We'll Third, uh, you don't have a projectable one. Yeah. Like this. So this is um, old for some and new for other commissioners. Um, the Montview Conservation Area is horseshoe shaped. The rectangle in the center is privately held. Um, by the owner of the farmhouse. And so I'll just lead you through what's currently there. Um, you can see a roughly square area labeled A, that's known, it's used by the neighborhood as a soccer field. Um, B is a rectangle that reaches from the property border to the soccer field and runs the full eastern boundary. And it is an area that is <coughs> lower than the soccer field grade and accumulates water and heavy rains, um, generally dries out. That area has been mown, so there's not a lot of woody vegetation there. And um, the proposal is basically to, uh, we can continue on annual mowing there, and if it looks like it's invasives, then we do invasives control. If there's a, um, an issue from the neighborhood or neighborhood community to want to do plantings there, and turn it more into a shrub, a shrub island kind of habitat. We could also do that. Um, C is an area that was, when the Montview neighborhood farm was there, was annual beds, and um, that is currently sort of returning to meadow. Previously, it was just grassland. D is a less defined area, but when the Montview neighborhood farm there was there, it was a forest garden. So there are plenty of plantings 
there are trees, shrubs um, for various uses there. Um, that I think is the biggest open question as to what the commission does with that area and you know, how, how we manage that area and who we wish to enlist to be working in that area. E is a, a wetland and a 50 foot protected zone around that wetland. Actually, under the ordinance, if it was a private landowner, the protected area or protected zone would be 35 feet. But I'm assuming that the Conservation Commission would like to manage the area with at least the protected zone that applies in the outer areas of the city. Um, so that area E is, that's from the mass GIS layer, um, wetlands layer. But um, Mason delineated it, and if anything, it's larger. It goes closer to the road boundary on the south. Um, and this is an area I think I talked to Sarah. If we are going to pursue invasives, removal, and native plantings, we probably need the Conservation Commission or a community group to apply to us with an order. So we can issue an order of conditions, um, much like Broad Brook ask us what right. order of conditions if we're doing the basis we can't, we can't it's we work can't, in the zone. It is it's it's you know jurisdictional under Wetlands Protection Act and city ordinance. Um, and then F is largely within the hundred foot buffer. Um, it's not within the protected zone so there's more flexibility. But again you, you would probably want the order of conditions to apply the work there. Um, that area is really not that large and Again, you could do some invasives control. The predominant invasives are Rosa multiflora, um, oriental bittersweet. Um, I've seen you know, garlic mustard, um, and, and them, those, are, those are sort of the main, the main species. Uh, some Japanese knotweed in a few, couple places. Um, and, and the other thing about that area F along the western boundary is there's a sewer easement there, and that's actually the Williams Street Brook runs underneath there in the culvert. So the, the first, I guess, thing is the order of conditions. Um, and I think you know, the Conservation Commission could, could create the order of conditions and be the, the agency bringing that forward. And then we can enlist anyone who wanted to work in the order of conditions, whether it be um, Meadow City Conservation. Order of conditions governing a, uh, an application, it's yet to be filed. Right, and, uh, right. We would create, just like we did when the um, walkway went in in Mineral Hills, the aluminum walkway, Sarah brought forward an application and we issued an order of conditions to install that. So this would be an order of conditions to do invasive removal and native plantings um, within the wet and blue buffer zone. Um, and of course we could have staff approval or commission approval as part of that order of conditions so that when an actual concrete plan for work went forward, they bring it back to us. Um, the other significant management decision is the forest garden. And I, I have been out there, I've talked to Paige um, pretty extensively about what's there on the ground. And there is, there is disagreement within the community about forest garden and how, you know, how the forest garden should go forward. Um, and we can step away and just let the forest garden be um, dormant for now, not gone, but dormant. Um, or we can define more, uh, you know, more precisely both the boundaries of the forest garden and what's within the forest garden that we maintain going forward. But given that two commissioners, you, know, you haven't been here for the previous discussions. I, my last time I presented this, uh, I said that I wanted to have you sitting here and taking part in the decision because we probably need to make the decision and have you know, a three-year period where we're going to let it happen since it is. It's a perennial um, management plan that would be going for. So the, 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 the question that's probably a good place to start is what, what's on the table before us is that uh, uh, we've asked Sarah to uh, develop a memorandum of understanding with the MUTQ MC3 and the decision we have to make, what are the parameters for that memorandum to understand? Essentially, what, what do we want um, to, uh, to have uh, addressed in that memorandum of understanding, um, which then both define what uh, is and is not being delegated by the commission to 
MC3 to manage this thing. Um, and that it, this was a very uh, useful, that although I'd driven by it, I hadn't walked the land, and this was very useful when Danny brought it in uh, at the last meeting as a way to understand where there is and isn't uh, any kind of agricultural opportunity and where there is or isn't any uh, wetlands uh, constrained. Uh, well, it's all, the whole horseshoe is conservation land, but the only part of it is actually uh, influenced by a resource area. Now, Sarah, did you send anybody else a copy of this? Or just I didn't know. Okay. Uh, Sarah was uh, essentially reminding me earlier today that it would be good um, to talk about uh, the goals for the area, uh, what I was referring to as parameters for management, um, and uh, the uh, provide an opportunity um, and, uh, to define what the process is going to be. Doing and just delegate to Sarah the, the development of an MOU. Do we want to, uh, uh, I assume, we want to review the final draft before, uh, but we don't need to do it all in, uh, uh, as a committee of the whole, the development of the MOU that would be pretty inefficient, but that we do want to take a last look at it before we actually agree uh, that that's the, the government budget. So my, my sense is that um, there are, uh, th there's some history here about the, uh, uh, the, when the land became conservation land, uh, that it was assumed to be uh, in a densely populated neighborhood and that the neighborhood uh, would be influential uh, in its management uh, and, and or conversely stated that the management would be sensitive to the needs and interests of the neighborhood uh, as well as having to respect the larger uh, uh, constraints of uh, conservation land generally. I think that our decision to proceed with MC3 as the nonprofit with whom we will develop a memorandum of understanding is uh, consistent with that initial intent. Right? So the, the, beyond that, um, I think it, uh, there has been a historic, you know, there was, it was being farmed these last three years. Um, there's no requirement that it remain in that agricultural use uh, as a piece of conservation land. Um, uh, and if it is, then, um, that would probably be one of the parameters that you want to uh, establish is where, um, what, what is and is not land uh, uh, that we would agree to have uh, be put in any use. And then a subset of that kind of question is what Bounty is bringing up. Does the, the, uh, the durable um, productive capacity, the forest garden, um, uh, the F area uh, is, uh, all right, so the forest garden is D. Yeah. Is D. So, Sorry, D. Yeah, which is a much, much smaller area. Yeah, it is, uh, as, a, as I recall the initial license, it was whatever's left behind is the property of the city, so you can choose to let it stay or, or not. But that's, I think, a subset of the larger question. Of that. There's no requirement that this be put in agricultural use just because it has been historically. Uh, agricultural use uh, has to be carefully managed in order not to uh, run afoul of our responsibilities uh, in government conservation. So. so, one of the things is that when I look at this property and I contrast it with um, Fitzgerald Conservation Area, is that's a huge area where the feed on the ground of the Broadbrook Coalition actually take work that the commission may not be able to accomplish um, effectively or expeditiously and, and actually serve the public better. And I guess one of the things is this is such, we're really talking about if you, if you take E and F 
which are largely under our jurisdiction as a regulatory body, mm -hmm. and really work there is, you know, for yeah. even, even without an MOU, is just ruled by the order of conditions. Right. Um, and if you take A and B and accept that those are pretty low intensity or, or sort of low um, intensity of thought in terms of management decisions, you really get to C and D as being the only things that are up in the air. And if the entire parcel is 3.2 acres, then we're looking at some something you know, under, under the total. And if you take out the annual beds, you're getting down to a quarter of an acre. And I, I guess that just in terms of the email context that I've had, I'm, I really am wondering whether having someone interposed between us and the public reduces our workload. I mean, that's the idea is that it reduces the workload and it makes management better. And you know, I think one of the things, and I, if if it's correct that that email was about the was about this conservation area, I guess one thing that concerns me is that what's hap what seems to have happened is that everyone who is at all associated with MC3 has feels like they are deputized to control land, control what's going on in that property. And and that that to me is as chaotic, that's as chaotic that's very chaotic. It doesn't it doesn't give consistency. It's not a set of rules that you know, these are the rules that are on the on the website of Broadbrook and you have to abide by these rules. Um, and I think it's even more important in a downtown area that you just you have very straightforward rules and that you don't have fifty deputies basically <laughs> showing up and enforcing their inter interpretation of the rules. Um, and that, you know, that's why for me, I don't know whether taking back the control over C and D, or even just D, because C was going to go back to a meadow that would be cut once or twice a season. Um, just taking back area D and saying, what does the Conservation Commission think should happen in this quarter of Nankar on Montview? And if we think a forest garden is an interesting concept, and we can line, and we as a conservation commission can line up volunteer labor to make it happen with a plan that we submitted to us and we approve, then we can do that. Um, if we decide we don't think a forest garden is a good idea in this particular area, for because people will feel excluded from use, um, because they'll feel like it's someone else's garden, then maybe we don't. Do that. But I just think because it's such a micro decision. That I'm not sure that interposing another party gets us a benefit. Hmm. Which is a different perspective than we were operating from in our first discussion. That um, we were thinking of the parcel as a whole as uh, we need somebody to be, since we're not going to be in the business of day to day. Right. right. Well, we could still have a memorandum of understanding, but it could just be incredibly narrow. Much, much narrower than we were thinking which is that you walk boundaries, you make sure no one's doing something on the soccer field in the wet meadow that we didn't expect because it's very clear. C, and this, this is new to me because I haven't been in, I, was, I came, came to the February meeting and no one was in that quorum, so that's the last time I've heard it. So it was unclear. I haven't heard much about what was the decision about C. To my understanding, in the next, in, in the future, something would happen to C in terms of agriculture. But now it sounds like now it will be known to keep perennial and what do you plan? For this year. Oh, so it's just a one year decision. Yeah, the MOU was, was temporary till the um, conservation restriction is, is written and voted in. I think that, yeah, I mean, my impression, for, my impression was that in the process that for now, given the level of contention in the fact that there's not a there's not a real clear path forward for that annual area mm -hmm. that we were going to do nothing, but we were going to let the land lie fallow. Mm -hmm. And even even going forward, that given the difficulty in a dense urban area to choose an option that pleases 80% plus of the people, because you know, you're not going to please everybody, but that pleases 80% of the people would be difficult. And that Again, going you know, going back to the history, that when this area was created, one of the one of the discussions was was it appropriate for community gardens? And at that time, and those were the neighborhood things today. At that time, the neighborhood was not enthusiastic about that. 
because of traffic issues. Mm -hmm. um, now, could it be community gardens just for the people who live within walking distance? Potentially, but I think that's a, a decision as a commission. We have to be saying, well, we, um, you know, we're basically making it available for people within walking distance and for people farther away. We're sorry, but this is this is a resource decision. Um, but I think that's why we sort of left. You know, C. There's nothing driving C4 at this time. So if it goes back to grassland for now, it can always be. Well then, what's the, what's not to just say, well, it's D. Why don't we we'll, we'll leave off a decision for the future on that as well? That's why I kind of kind of getting to is that since we made if if the decision from the commission was we're going to wait a year, right? For C, why not do that for D? I I think you I think you can. It's just that right now there's something on. So here here's one of the issues is that right now there is something in the forest garden. Mm -hmm. There is a mix of perennials and that you know, management A was to remove them and, and manage with, with knowing. Management B was basically identify what you're going to retain and do the minimum ma you know, maintenance necessary to keep them going forward. And I think what's happened is even that minimum maintenance has become a bone of contention. Mm -hmm. um, right? I, I envision that if, if it was not being expanded and that it would basically people say, well, okay, you know, these are some bushes and some trees, and we, you know, their minimal pruning and mulching and watering could go forward. But people are still very unhappy because they don't know that there's a plan. So I think we actually, we as a commission, take take on this issue and say, what what do we want to happen here? Mm -hmm. um, and if we do, if we do see the forest garden continuing then affirmatively say, we are going to allow these maintenance tasks to go forward. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, not saying that we'll get to the MOU and then we'll decide, because again, the MOU doesn't seem to me to get us a tremendous amount of, of benefit. Because yeah, yeah, we're talking about an area that literally yeah. is maybe three times the size of the completely, room. Yeah, and I've spent some time around that while I'm in it. Yeah, I completely agree that, that uh, there's, it's such a small space, which brings a larger question of, what, it, what are the needs of people in this area, this very dense area? Right. And the, and the reason why is that when you have few, few amount of resources and a lot of people wanting to use them, that's why issues become contentious. Right. Because everyone has their own opinion about what they want to do. And I think that well, I'm, I would be presumptuous to say that in the past people thought there would be an interest in community gardens. I would say that more people would be interested in community gardens not less, and so it would be even more contentious. So it might be, I would like to see the commission to see, see if there is a way for other agricultural kind of community-based gardening plots somewhere else, or in, in addition, but I definitely wouldn't want to see those go away. Mm -hmm. So at some point, I would like to see that area be used for agriculture in some way, hopefully having the local neighborhood folks be involved in that. As for the forest garden, I personally, I think that the, the uh, sort of a minimum amount of maintenance over the next year while we kind of figure out what happens should happen. I don't know exactly what that means, but I think some minimum, minimum amount of maintenance should happen, and that should be clear. Mm -hmm. And I like the idea of having more control from the Conservation Commission because it seems like there's so much in the neighborhood, so much happening with people not agreeing. Right? I agree with you. I think having more control under one body, um, which we have that control, is better than letting it go out and become more of an issue. So, um, yeah. And I, I would go toward a memorandum of understanding. Mason said conservation restriction. Is there, are we going toward a conservation restriction for yes. sure? I thought that was our goal. That had been uh, the goal that um, need a nonprofit to hold it, and the MC3 would be the, the identified nonprofit. Okay. Um, and that while that process is unfolding, is unfolding, the MOU would be the government. Uh, okay. And we did decide at the last meeting also to move forward with an, with an MOU to um, outline some clear responsibilities. For MCCC. Right. Well. Right. 
I think that the uh, conservation restriction is pretty much required um, according to the, the deed uh, that went with the property. Yeah. Well, it's not, it's not required. It wasn't a condition of the acquisition. It was always envisioned, but yeah. when it came time to place the CR on the property, there wasn't any No one stepped forward to the Acceptance. But I guess even the conservation restriction is the way that the conservation restriction will work is something that we as a we need to do more education as a commission for the restriction holder because the conservation restriction holder is not again the, the person who enforces right that if you if you have a conservation restriction and your responsibility is to detect violations of you know, the preservation covenants and then report that to the landowner because the landowner is right, on the hook for those. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I think of, if we have people bringing to our attention that people are abusing the wetlands or, you know, building structures that are on the property, then the process is they bring it to our attention and we add, right. we add an enforcement order. Rather than, I think, creating a, a real potential for conflict where people who are part of MCCC feel like this is my conservation restriction, and I'm going to walk down and tell that person who is you know, picking the white, you know, the kids who are picking wildflowers, and you can't do that because you're in violation, you're altering this area. Um, I'm not saying that that's not what the con you know, conservation restriction is trying to protect those interests, it's just I'm trying to get away from, I really want us to have the responsibility in the end. Um, well, I don't think we, Divest ourselves of responsibility, even with no. the MOU or the. You know, we're still yeah. it. We're right. just like, getting somebody to partner with. Right. To, um, the restriction the goes to the land and to the land. Right. right. So we're ultimately responsible. But I. But I. Don, when you were when you were just for clarification, when you were talking earlier about <clears throat> comparing it to the the Gerald Lake project, were you suggesting that we might not? go forward with a conservation restriction and instead have a, an MOU? So it was, or what were you, were you, you, know, what I, are you I, suggesting a change in course? Well, I guess, so a conservation restriction to have another another set of eyes that are independent, you know, someday in the future there's a terrible conservation commission that that really doesn't care if, if EPW starts to pile salt down on that property. Mm -hmm. and. A CR holder comes in and says, "No, this is this is a violation of a conservation restriction that I hold. You're not conserving it, and I can enforce this legally if I need to. You need to, you need to act." So, I have no problem with the CR. The MOU, though, in terms of where we started this discussion, was an MOU that would delegate the process for finding a farmer. Right. That's where it started. And we were very, you know, we were. That was a huge delegation, and that was going to be. That was obviously a potentially controversial decision as to exactly what kind of farmer and what kind of farming would occur on the property. So if you know the MOU can say publish a list of rules approved by the Conservation Commission and report violations to staff, work to remove and work to develop an invasive removal plan approved by the staff for the Commission. plan encroaches on the yeah, I mean, resource area, then you have to come before the so, so I guess I wouldn't say, you know, the conservation restriction is still appropriate, and MOU is still appropriate to, to enlist the MCCC to help us with that work, but it's a much more limited delegation. And so we bring back the more contentious decisions about, like you said, having that land there because it's a dense neighborhood it's a very valuable resource and so i would say the commission keeps that decision close to itself and, mm -hmm. and if we we're going to be the ultimate decision maker anyway we might as well draw the fire to begin with rather than have it have it blow up and have the burning right we arrive mm -hmm. to the burning building yeah, so. let's set it on fire stop my yeah. <laughs> yeah plus the burning could occur if we don't remove those uh, right. piles <laughs> Some huge bush piles there. I think it's important to note too, though, that the brush piles came about as a result of people doing things that weren't necessarily in line with the Conservation Commission's vision for the site. So, if the commission develops a, a clear vision of what it would like to happen using Downey's 
ideas as a template that things like that that could cause issues in the future could be prevented. Right, it was one of the easier wetlands to walk around because apparently some areas have been mowed right up to the, mm -hmm. uh, almost to the edge I, of the wetlands. I think that's actually a very clear thing that we can do. That and all the discussion has come through C and D, those two areas. But I think we should be clear about the function of that wetland. It's sort of an educational um, purpose for us. You we know, go up and say, well, there's biodiversity functions and there's water storage and retention functions, and these are things that are not allowed based on our wetland ordinance, and we should be very clear about it. Um, so, in fact, I think that's actually very important for us to just to take a stand and say. One of the questions that we got out there was, what are you going to do with the crosswalk? There's a Which board, is just a boardwalk across the uh, yeah. end. Yeah, yeah. We said, well, it's going to be removed. Mm -hmm. Plus, you can clear span the water somehow, which is possible. It's mm -hmm. it be a major. Quite a community project. Yeah, it would be a major project. What are the, your thoughts, Tim? You were indicating that you would like to see it uh, stay in as that the sea area uh, stay in uh, agricultural use. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, I guess I separate between um, feeling like sure it seems like a good idea, and as a conservation commissioner. I'm um, indifferent um, that it's not beneficial environmentally for this to be, even if it's properly, organically, uh, wonderfully fine, um, it's not uh, better environmentally than letting it grow up. Uh, so I don't, I, don't, I, I don't know whether we really, as a commission, um, ought to be in the business of advocating um, use of uh, land other than we can make an argument that it's historically been used uh, for agricultural purposes, and therefore it doesn't make anything worse by continuing to use. But I'm, so I'm, I'm a bit torn. I can't I see a farmer coming in and wanting that for anything major. Yeah. It's not going to be. A I, I think it's, I see it as a community resource. Yeah, it's more, it's more of a community yeah. or uh, you know, like an organic. Gardening type thing. Well, it's kind of like I mean, it's the soccer field is a much easier example. Yeah, it's a great community resource. No one has that. You, no, not many people in the neighborhood have that large it's lawn to play soccer. So it's a great community resource. Same thing goes for the community gardens. There's a lot of people who have very small yards, or are renters, mm -hmm. or what have you. And so it's a great community resource. And yeah, it can be done in ways that is not beneficial. But in this particular location, it doesn't impact. A, Know, resource areas in any no, I understand. demonstrable way. So yeah, as far as pretty much removed from the uh, what? So in, if, if, if I were to decide, if I were personally would want to decide either to let it just regrow or succeed to forest or something, or have it be gardens, I would much prefer it to be gardens because I'd want to encourage people to get out and enjoy the area and be able to have some use. So I understand what you're saying. It, when you say that we don't want to be in, the, you know, in terms of advocating things, the soccer field is sort of advocating recreation as well. So I guess my thought is that one of the things that we are in this limbo between taking on responsibility and the MOU, which would devolve responsibility to the community group MCCC, um, occurring, but that's you know a good amount of time has passed, and we're still in this space. And so, if we take what I've given you as a management survey and call it an interim management plan, adopt it as an interim management plan with the soccer field. It's being mowed by the community. I don't see that that would really change. And so we would explicitly, basically, we would have a document that everyone in the neighborhood could refer to as far as what activities are happening within each area. Mm -hmm. um, and we could you know, publicize it and say, we are working toward an MOU with MCCC. Um, 
And while we do that, this is our management plan. We see the wet meadow is going forward with limited mowing. We see the annual beds as basically laying fallow until we come up with an, op you know, an option, if there's a better option, to, to make the resource more valuable to the community. The forest garden lets the limited with, you know, if need be, something visible so that everyone knows this is where we think it is and this is, these are the boundaries, it's not getting bigger, it's not encroaching. Um, and and then identify exactly what maintenance we want to happen. And we could even have you know, Sarah develop that list and she basically has to sign off on that maintenance. But that way people, you know, people will see that we actually anticipate some work going on within that area. And then with the wetland protected zone and outer buffer, basically ask Sarah to bring forward our next meeting a notice of intent that would specify what activities we anticipate. But at least that would fill the gap for now. As far as people not knowing who is not knowing who is in charge, and not knowing is MCCC, because I know we've talked in that direction, and, 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 but we're not there yet. And, and uh, for C, uh, you mentioned the uh, possibility of a, uh, um, only people within walking distance. You know, that it be a community resource in, in the same way that the soccer field is a community resource, um, as a way to address. Uh, Issues of, of traffic, etc. Um, while would that be a constraint? Uh, it, it's an interesting idea that will solve some of my concerns about us advocating a certain kind of um, agricultural use. Um, but I was, it, I, I, are, are we there yet? I mean, or is that something that we just let we stay silent on the specifics of C, other than um, for this year it gets well or push on? I think you know one of the issues with C is you need water and you need a place to store your tools, and unless you want to schlep them out every time you walk out, and that you know involves now you may just say that you know. Water is a big, a big deal, um, and so if there's no water on site, then that really reduces its value as a community garden, um, because during the heat of the summer, yeah. you're going to walk 500 yards with your five-gallon bucket and then keep coming back. Um, also, you, you know, you think you'd have to say no on-site parking, which means that you can't put a big bladder in the back of a pickup. Um, so, and then tool storage. Some people would carry their tools, but not a lot. Again, in you know, July and August, how, how far are you going to carry your, your hand tools that you're going to use? So that's, you know, just looking at what's going on with Grow Food Northampton, that was a big deal, was developing the infrastructure to make it attractive to people. And I think with all of their efforts, they op are opening 100 plots. Right? And so I going think we can. Yeah, no, I know. They're going fast. They're going fast, but I think the first year, though, right? They're planning. They're going to be this, is, this yeah. is what they've done so far. But I think that they're they are only, despite the fact that the community gardens up on Hospital Hill have been oversubscribed for years, and that's what I heard at CPA when the proposal from Growth Food and Family was coming forward. Lots of lots of areas have been proposed as potential community gardens, but they never come to fruition because of transportation and parking issues, because of tool storage issues. As soon as you store tools, then you have structures. And then people's structures fall down and look ugly, and then the neighborhood doesn't like that. And then you have people leaving their trellises over the winter, and they look ugly. And so those, all this, you know, farming is not neat, necessarily. <laughs> and so unless the community is really on board with that, with the fact that the farmed area may be kind of messy during you know, certain times, um, they don't welcome community gardens. Mm -hmm. And so, you know. So it wasn't until you know, from Northampton decades later that the city bit again or was able actually to find a space. So but, but, the, the implications of that sort of go back to my hesitance to uh, encourage the, in the way we structure the MOU or, or uh, later conservation restrictions are anticipating that we, ought, we think C ought to stay in agricultural use because it, it, it opens up this Pandora's box of all kinds of, uh, of issues. When what we really are responsible for doing is protecting open space and having that. I think you would want to have a conversation with 
the neighborhood about what their expectations are for that. That's what I was going to suggest, but I don't know how to do that because I mean we're all it, it's already to a kind of a peak, and I think we need to let things simmer a little bit, calm down, not say that, calm down. I guess <laughs> take off the heat. So if anything, if anything, no, I, I'm totally fine with waiting for this season. I, I mean, I think that's probably a good thing to see um, what kind of ideas come up about the involvement of the neighborhood in, in C and D in agriculture. And my my suggestion for D is very minimal um, sort of maintenance of what is there now, just because it's perennial and it needs to have that minimal maintenance. But and and Downey's uh, idea of identify clearly the, you yeah. know, the limits of yeah, that. Exactly. Yeah. So, so currently, you know, currently, um, Paige has done work on the property uh, and was working with Montview and Taylor Farm, has been communicating with representatives of MCCC. Yeah. Um, but in the absence of an MOU, do we just, do we want to, as a commission, make a decision on and, and I would think even windows of time, you know, say that if maintenance is going to occur, it's going to occur a maximum of X number of hours a week, and you know, Sarah could bring that forward to us. Because again, I think just in terms of managing people's expectations, if we say we have enlisted volunteer assistance to do this minimum maintenance, this is what it is. Um, because I think what's now is that because it's up in the air, mm -hmm. sometimes They'll look out and they'll say, "Oh, well, who's who's working over there? Who's working over there? What are they doing on the conservation?" Mm -hmm. uh, and they don't—they honestly don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, so if we if we define that and put it in, you know, the management plan that we're going to put out, say we endorse this for now for this growing season until we make a decision about where the forest fire is going. The area will be delimited by. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Flashing neon signs, <laughs> forest garden, yeah. or something. Electrified by solar panels. Something. But, um, but I think it would just help for us to, as a commission, endorse some decisions so that people yeah. know it's coming from us and there's not any years. Yeah. So the, the commission voted at their last meeting to move forward with an MOU with MCCC. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So we're still planning to do that, but just limited. It's scope? Well, to use it, uh, uh, test this, uh, I think the, the sense of this discussion is to use this as a, 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 an outline of a management plan. This is what we want uh, MCCC to address. Uh, there will be a couple of other broader guidelines that remind um, uh, MC3 that this is a conservation land, public uh, conservation land, and they are um, not the, the police of it. Um, they have, as Donnie articulated before, uh, uh, the, the, the opportunity and, and the responsibility to uh, notice if some abuse is going on and to advise us of that so we can intervene, but that they are not the, uh, the police of that process. Um, and that there then would be a specific uh, addition to uh, the, the forest garden um, that identifies that during this period of time, and to see Andy, I guess, that during this period of time, um, uh, only uh, special, uh, specify the number of uh, bush hoggers or something on sea to keep the, the, to avoid any development of woody um, plants, etc. Um, in terms of, so it might identify a frequency for that, but uh, and indeed would identify uh, the kind of uh, minimum maintenance that we need for them to, and identify some mechanism by which we identify the physical constraints of the mm -hmm. forest um, And that that would be um, what we, uh, Turn to you to, to work with MC3 to, to write up and to plan. Okay. Yeah. I mean, my, my so Sarah, my my thought is that that this serves as an interim management plan with management option B for the forest garden in place, 
and maybe a reference to the notice of, a notice of intent for ENF, but that until the and that we go forward with drafting the MOU, but until the MOU is approved, you can't pass off. But right, there's we don't know what authority we're passing off. But as soon as the MOU is in place and it's agreed to by both parties, then we as a commission can say, from this day forward, the powers and obligations within the MOU are yours, MCCC, and whatever's not is is our primary responsibility. But until that MOU is drafted. Rather than having people still not clear as to who they should talk to first, right. plus, so, and so that this was, is our this is our in, in our, plan. our prior meeting we uh, sort of fudged that and acted as if we already had an understanding with MC3 right. and uh, suggested to Paige that any volunteering she wanted to do she had to clear with them and right. so forth. When in fact, as you're proposing, that uh, should remain with us to approve. Uh, now hopefully this isn't going to take for long before the end of the season plays. Comments from the public? I would like to speak. Okay. You all, I want to thank you for the endless hours that you have put towards this tiny parcel of conservation land amongst the thousands of acres that you have to deal with. Um, that's how things go. It is. Is this how you deal all the time with this degree of conflict? No. Besides, I'm wondering it's where, where my fouls are here, you know? Um, I, I want to challenge some of the things that you're uh, saying. Um, yes, a very limited role for MCCC. It has been extremely difficult. Uh, working with them. They are intent on preparing the land to be plowed. Therefore, their role in overseeing the management of the forest garden is, it, it's a, it doesn't make any sense. They are intent, they have told me, to prepare places to take the plants on my own properties. In other words, this public food crop um, system should be moved to private property and then that private food systems move to this public property. It, it is a conundrum that uh, I encourage you all to address. That um, I, I want you to be strong and say that you approve of the forest garden being there for generations to come. This is for those children who live in that neighborhood and their grandchildren. It's not the same as agriculture, it's different. It's, you know, there's this continuum of the, the nature agriculture continuum. And forest gardening is somewhere in the middle there. It's moving towards nature, or it's coming from nature. And, and in terms of resilience on the land, one of the goals that you all hold dear is that whatever projects are on conservation lands, that if for some reason somebody leaves, the person operating that project leaves, that that land can hold its own. This forest garden can hold its own. And it, this is not to say that it doesn't need management. Forest gardens are human environments, humans working with nature. And this forest garden, still needs some management, it needs some weeding, there's still um, uh, perennial polycultures being developed to go in these various beds. There's a lot of siding to be done of the pathways and I would really encourage that we get that into the um, management plan. Um, I want you to take a strong stand on the forest garden so that it's not equivocal any longer. So that the folks with MCCC understand that the forest garden is an ecologically designed system that has the support of the CONSCOM and the planning department. And I think that will help. It's not an enormous area, but as soon as that issue gets clarified, I think there will be some, you know, I think things will calm down a bit. Um, in terms of relationship, 
with MCCC, it has been, uh, I have been appalled. I have been appalled at the extraordinary rudeness with which I have been treated, and this is not something that this city should tolerate. And you, as commissioners, need to make damn certain that this kind of authoritative approach to being with citizens who volunteer on conservation land is not tolerable. I don't see how MCCC could hold the conservation restriction or even have an MOU in a way that is anything less than that. These are, uh, this is a situation that's just really angry. And unless things, as you state, unless things are really clearly spelled out, and that you retain control over the land, it's going to be very difficult. And, and I really urge that um, you hold off on granting MCCC much control. I have to say these are people who I have had so much respect for, for six years. Enormous respect. This past six months has been a transformation that's just been stunning. And um, you've seen it. And I know that you all are receiving emails that are inflammatory, that are coming from a place of something going on there. And it's time for you all to take charge on this piece of property. Um, in terms Thank of the- I need to uh, ask you to limit your- Okay, yeah. To, uh, let's see if anybody else has things that they want. Yeah. Yes. Um, I'm Carol, I'm a, I've been a neighborhood volunteer for two years on um, Armonkey. And I live on Holyoke Street. And I also have hesitancy about MCC having a lot of control over the land. I think that I was also a member of the steering committee, too. Um, and at first, I felt like it was a really wonderful connection. But then towards the end, there seemed to be a lot of um, <coughs> animosity. Um, I really just would like to encourage that the land be used for a community purpose and that also it is decided by a greater community what happens in the land. I think that's basically what I want to say. Thank you. Members, maybe MCC could be more open to like a larger area, not just people who have bought the land, who have like personal preferences to what they want their backyard to look like, um, or maybe, yeah, and I, I'd like to see there be a very strong um, overseeing from the commission of, because um, I wouldn't want what happened to the land F to happen. That is very disturbing. Yeah, can you get um, all the trees that were cut? Pardon me? The, all the trees I cut, there are the piles that are there, the, the brush hogging, and, and, and like it's within, not within. And the, in E. In the, within, the in e, yeah. within the wetland as well, the trees yeah. that were cut. Violation of the Wetland Protection Act, is that what you mean? Oh, uh, yeah, I can attest to that. Mm -hmm. Other comments? Sure. Um, I want to ask Carol, okay, could, we, could I just no, ask you? Okay. Could I address the commission? My name is Joel, Joel Sachs. I live downtown, but I am a regular, frequent um, visitor to that neighborhood and um, walk or run in the meadows. I've been doing it for almost 30 years. <laughs> I love that neighborhood. And um, so, as somebody who goes through there, I know many people. What, what, I, what it seems like from what I know, from what I've heard of people I know um, who've been working it and other people, the conflict is, is a personal conflict. It's a cultural conflict. I, and, and the issue of agriculture versus conservation 
is being used um, as a way of, of, of somehow um, expressing, as was said, animosity, some kind of misunderstanding, which I think there, there is a history there, as I understand it, in terms of putting things up on the space that were not part of the, the, your intent. Um, what Lisa DiPiano and, and Molly did with that canopy or whatever they put up there was a violation uh, of what the neighborhood had, had wanted. So I can understand their distress. I wonder if there's some way, and this is um, you know, very utopian, but that, that there can be a dialogue about that, how do people get it through their distress? Because it's not really about, I don't think, um, whether it's agriculture or, or forest garden, there's something else there. And I, I and, and so I don't know how you do that, but as a community that's committed to civility and human rights and diversity, I think that's something that, that somehow should be figured in. Even though you're a conservation commission, we take a holistic look at all these things. It's all one, one system. Um, and so whatever these emotional, historical issues are, I don't know how to figure that out, but um, anyway, you know, I, I, I'm sorry that it's come to that. The thing that I also want to just, just throw out there is what a model I've seen that, that Paige and the other folks have been creating there in terms of um, something that benefits our community as, as what permaculture can do. And we are becoming a community, both in Northampton and wider, um, the wider environs, that is, is, is really a leader in, in the region and in the country in terms of creating permaculture and sustainability as a future for how our society should be operated. And I know their commitment to not using cars, um, to bringing things to the space through bicycles or other means, but not using petrol, um, is really remarkable. And so, however that can be figured as something that we as a community um, stand for um, and embrace, I, I, I still, I have to say, I'm still, I was, um, I'm, I'm taking a little diversion here, but what happened to, I appreciate you staying at the state hospital grounds as opposed to Village Hill, Hospital of Health. I was involved in the effort to um, try to keep the Green West Street neighborhood what it was. And, and some of us were pushing for Smith to build its science and engineering complex and whatever may come next up on Hospital Hill and jumpstart what could have been a tremendous collaboration, an eco-village, um, who knows what could have gone on there. And now we have more um, tracked housing up there. And somebody has taken over Cole Morgan and nobody's really told us the story of what, who benefited financially? But what I'm saying, let me just say, so, so in terms of being visionary of what we want to, I'm sorry to, to go off there, but just what do we want to stand for in terms of the future? And I, I do applaud that idea of permaculture and, and um, using that as a model of Thank you. Sure. And I just want to kind of in response to what Joel said, um, affirm um, a couple of things that the cons kind of said. Um, because it seems like there are either personality conflicts or emotions or, or whatever else is going on, um, kind of given that um, a, a, a good response from the cons con, I, I liked separating um, monitoring and enforcement. I think that that's a really good idea. Um, so that there's like a, a kind of an extra step so that any, anything coming from emotions or whatever can be dealt well. Um, and, right, and, and uh, other issues that I've seen in the last couple of months have just come from um, confusion about who has authority to, to do what and things like that. So, so as you said, like, um, you know, it's stating positively what sort of management can be done by whom rather than prohibiting certain things and leaving the rest of them is a good idea. Thank you. I have a comment if you may. Uh, my name is Felix and I volunteered down at the farm maybe for two years, three, off and on. And um, 
I'd really like to encourage everyone who has made a decision, a powerful position here, who can make decisions, to think about like what future can benefit the most number of people for the longest number of time. And in Seattle and in Boston, people are somehow getting it together to have many, many acres, forest gardens and public parks that are making, like, they're not the front page, but they're somewhere in the New York Times, it's big. And this is the direction where things are going to go, or we're all going to be in serious trouble. I don't want to bring fear factor into the equation, but all of our foods come from everyone who eats food in this room probably gets their food from the other side of the country, maybe from other countries. And slowly but surely, we have to start growing more food locally and to have a cutting edge garden within walking distance of downtown is pretty unique. It's, I haven't really heard of many other things in many other cities anywhere nearby. And I would love to see people in a position of power here to, to own the forest garden, to own the project, and to back it, and to nurture it, because ultimately, what are we conserving? And if we're talking about a garden that takes decades to sort of come into full fruition, it sort of has to, the conversation can't be about micro slices of time and management and this and that. And we can really set like a, an incredible example here. Thank you. So commissioners, what the... Uh, you know, why have a question? And CCC attained their um, nonprofit status yet? Um, they are, I know they're in a state registered nonprofit, but they didn't have their 501c3, which isn't really needed for our purposes. Okay, anyway. I'm sorry. No, but they had to be a nonprofit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Along those lines, I, I just got an okay for fiscal sponsorship for the Forest Garden through creative thought and action. This is an outfit out of Ashfield, William Spaven, who does the Common Good Bank, um, who enthusiastically says, of course, you may continue to be fiscally sponsored. Okay, thanks. Um, so what uh, parameters uh, do we want to establish uh, uh, other than the basics that we've already outlined for Sarah uh, to proceed uh, with uh, using uh, Downey's plan area by area as the basis for uh, the, the work going forward. A few guidelines that we've articulated, including that they are not the police of the area. Uh, well, I support this as an interim plan, but um, to make it usable, I think the forest garden area has to be well defined. Yeah. Has to be what? Well defined. Yes. Both in space and in what activities will happen right. within that space. Right. Well, I think the, the, the prior sense of the discussions, and I mean, was on my own assumption, so let me make sure that we're verbal. I thought it was the sense of the commission in prior discussions that the, uh, whatever happened to the uh, tilde area, we wanted to uh, preserve the uh, uh, perennials that had been um, established in the last few years. So it, it probably is good to state that overtly. Is that agree? I mean, uh, that, that's what, what I took away from prior discussion, that that's a part of the agricultural uh, uh, development that comes closest to also providing habitat, et cetera, et cetera, right. and it's something that we thought was positive. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so that maintenance of that, uh, it needs to be identified, here's where it starts, here's where it, where it ends, here's what the uh, uh, expected and allowed maintenance, I think Downey's suggestion that it's even specified at the level of X number of hours a week or what type of work would be required so that it's very clear uh, what the expectation is. Um, and uh, uh, I think that you were suggesting that at this point it's a conservation commission um, uh, uh, 
who would, whether it was Paige or some other volunteer, who would uh, be in discussions with that volunteer resource to maintain that particular area. Right? That that would be carved out of the rest of the, uh, the plan. My goal for today is to fit Downey's plan as much as possible into the template of the review. So what you just said, for, an, for example, would be a conservation commission shell. Conservation commission shell arranged for for volunteers to work on the, the forest garden. A shell? Yeah. Um, I don't know the use of that, that term of art. <laughs> so I was I just used the the BBC um, MOU as a template. So the, the guidelines for BBC were the um, Fitzgerald Lake Management Plan. So the guidelines here would be the Montague Conservation Area nice. Management Plan. And MCCC shall, and we can identify priority tasks for them, and the Conservation Commission shall. Uh -huh. I see. Shall be ultimate owners. Well, we are. Sort of under, and that, I mean, that that's was one place where you can look into to, to just to find the difference between um, management and enforcement. Yes, because more of the of the of the shells for MCCC will be management, right? And more strictly the management. Strictly management. Yeah, I mean, if they're going to oversee uh, uh, invasives removal, then uh, then that's a and come before us with a plan of proposal. So would we expect them to come before us then, for the invasive species removal? Well, that's how, it's in the how, management how urgent a need is it, as opposed to something that we'd like to elect it. It just, I mean, you can do it now or you can do more later. Definitely. And it's not. At the very least, the man management will be sort of oversight about things. I mean, I, I like your wording here, management in the E, it's removing 16 bridge, other management consistent with our WPA and West End Wetlands Ordinance. I would like to see a very clear list of those kinds of activities so that it's an education of what is and is not allowed within certain boundaries. So if we can um, have ex expanded language about management consistent with WPA and North Hampton Wetlands Ordinance, I think that would be good. Because I'm a parent. I'm a little upset that people are just mowing and doing anything that they want, and all the all the focus is what's going on over here in the in the gardens, C and D. This is a conservation area. The entire area should be managed appropriately. Right. So I think that area of E and F should really be should be specified, and MCCC should be required to oversee what what. Management activities. Well, they're taking this on. They they need to take yes. on management of that wetland resource. That's what we're to asking. That, to that end, while <clears throat> while we were delineating the resource area, we also delineated the 50 foot area at the same time. Mm -hmm. So there's flags hanging out there. Say yeah. 50 foot. Mm -hmm. I, I guess in the first cycle, it might be helpful though for staff to develop a notice. Because when Brugler proposes activities within a jurisdictional area, they often consult with staff and right. say, is, you know, will, will this work under the city ordinance? And I'm not even sure, you know, for instance, we do have an exception within our city ordinance for footpaths. Mm -hmm. And so, but at least if we do the first notice of intent within the Conservation Commission, then we can hand that to them as a template for a break because they'll have to come back three years from now and get another notice of intent. Unless it's a management notice of intent. Right. So yeah. it's five years. Right. So the, but in any event, they'll, they'll, have, they'll have to come back to us, and they may wish to come back to us earlier if they get some grant money, and right. they, you know, they want to change their management plan, they could come back to us. And I know, you know they have, they're, building, they're building relationships with people who have field biology experience, and if they want to take advantage of that and bring it to us, then I... There's no reason we shouldn't adopt it. But at least for now, the first step. So, you know, right now there are 10, at least 10 foot wide paths within the 50 foot. Um, and there is, you know, the, the cutting of the sumac was done sort of as an improvement because they wanted it to be open. And all that was done without a notice of intent. And you know, 
there was historically a notice of intent that was issued, or there was filed, and I guess, word of condition issued for wood grant, in connection with wood grant. But that's long expired. And so I think we need to restart the process within our ordinance. Well, and implicit in what Tim was just saying is that, that uh, in, if, if their management practices have to ensure compliance with uh, uh, existing regulations, then uh, that it, it requires some education about, you know, you can't just go cut, you can't right. just go mow, you can't, you know, they, they, they will be responsible for knowing before they can be responsible for pointing out violations of right? And uh, I don't know how best to make sure they're fully uh, aware of uh, the constraints that apply to them. Well, I, I go with Tim's suggestion to spell out under management E exactly what they can and cannot do in that particular zone. Because that is our our daily work. Um, I think more specifically than just referring them to the ordinance in the act? Yeah. Uh, ensuring that yeah. any activities have other than you know passive uh, Activities have to be, uh, if, if they were all applying. commissioners, okay, just referring to the WPA and yeah. Northampton Rights Ordinance, but they're not. Um, so I think we have to spell it out a little bit. We don't have to go into excessive detail, but at least so that they know that mm -hmm. this is our protected area. No, it, I mean, and that was clear in one of the emails a, a few weeks ago where somebody talked, oh, there's all this. Uh, uh, damage that we have to, you know, trees that were knocked down in a storm that have to be somehow fixed by being cleared up without recognizing the habitat that had been created and mm -hmm. the natural process that that would interrupt if we were to clean it up. So I must be lucky because I haven't gotten any images. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you could have management, you know, remove existing footbridge, other management consistent with WPA and Northampton Wetlands Ordinance including but not limited to yeah. develop a list right. and yeah. then after that period all other work must be specifically approved by the all other work within a hundred feet you know, must be approved by specifically approved by the conservation commission mm -hmm. so that they you know so they have that list but even even on that list these things even on that list of work they need in order conditions even if we know that invasive removal might be something that we would definitely approve within the buffer zone, they still got to tell us. They still need our patients, and you yeah. can't just walk in and say this is helpful. Yeah. So that's why I say if we develop your conditions, that's sort of the document. Right? Here's the map. Because that's and here's Mesa's that, That's what I was trying to get to. Is that rather than trying to put together an exhaustive list preemptively, mm -hmm. uh, better right. to refer them to a few basic constraints in the act or, or the ordinance and then spill it out when they come forward with a request for right. a certain activity or work, then we put it in the order of conditions. And it may, it may be such that it only requires a determination of applicability rather than right. most mm -hmm. of the time. Mm -hmm. Just like Rob Wood did. Right, it's, it's what, they, it's they what we do forward. with our partners when yeah. they're managing the conservation. No, I'd be fine with that too. I think that this, you would tend to read this and say, well, what I'm doing is, and, and perhaps to yeah. discount it, yeah. say, oh, what I'm doing is fine. Give some examples. Yeah. Now, what, uh, uh, everybody got a copy of uh, Adele Frank's email since she couldn't be here to suggest that we also want to encourage good faith uh, conflict resolution as a, uh, a responsibility. Uh, I am. Um, so the uh, same email that she suggested that we file for you? No, this was just yesterday. Oh, no. This was mm -hmm. um, the, My uh, sense is that, not that that's meaningless, but I don't know what you can require except that people try um, uh, to um, resolve in good faith any. Conflict. On the other hand, it, it's uh, hard to anticipate the range of constituencies that might have a vested interest in any particular conservation process. 
um, well, from near and far and having somebody really be expected. I don't think we can require them to resolve. I think we maybe can no, require I, them. I think it's kind of out of our jurisdiction unless it directly uh, applies to the ordinance. Yeah, I, 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 I have the, the, the same feeling, but I, I, I think maybe um, our efforts to clarify go a long way to yeah. uh, we helped create some of this last uh, difficulty by um, not having it be clear when we said we were working toward an MOU what that empowered or didn't empower right. to, to, to do. Um, I mean who knows once we spell it out maybe MCCC will doesn't want it. <laughs> decide they don't want those restrictions. But I think the, the important thing is to let's spell it out. Let's, let's use this as an interim plan. Um, you feel like you've got enough uh, guidance to proceed to a draft? I think so. Mm -hmm. um, the only things I'm concerned about are if I use this um, management survey as a template for referring people for things to do now and things that are not allowed, the types of questions I'll have. Like, well, if your preferred management option is to uh, is to mulch who is going to mulch. Um, who's going to be removing the, the wood chips? Are we allowed to do that or is someone else going to be doing that? So just in the interim, I'd like to I would think in the interim we that. retain control. Yeah. So whoever wants, again, when I first suggested making this list, my thought was that if someone wants to show up and say, I'd love to spend a day in June cutting invasives, you know, taking out rose mold flora, and they satisfy you that they know what Rosemont Florida looks like, that we're, we're going to welcome that assistance. But so if it's not in the resource area. Right, then, right, right, exactly. If, so if it is, then, if it is, then they have to wait until the, the, you know, the request for mediation goes forward. But I, I don't think we need to narrow ourselves to, it's just people who come forward who want to volunteer, we, would, we as a commission would accept, because again, we retain the authority until we, pat, until we create an MOU, we decide who works and where they work. And again, I think that if that's clear, then there may be a less of this back and forth and you know, sort of, wait, I thought I was in control, wait, I thought you were in control. But what, you're asking about what happens when there is an MOU? No, I'm asking before the oh, MOU. Before there. Oh, before there, oh, okay. Because at the last meeting, the commission decided that MCCC should coordinate right. volunteers and people right. who wanted to right. work on the land. So okay. this is a, very different change from this. This is very different from that. So I just want to make sure that, that I'm clear what to do in yeah. the interim when I get phone calls and emails. My, my thought is that is to give you the work of coordinating because you're getting that work anyway. Right? Because what's happening is there's there's now back and forth traffic between volunteers and MCCC and then when people are not satisfied either with the ability to prescribe things or prescribe things then they're coming to you anyway, and to me, and to Kevin. And, and so why not just take responsibility, and if someone calls you, you can look down the list and say, you're authorized, right? I authorize you to do this. And again, I don't, there's not that much to do. Or, you know, the mowing is done every few months, so you can check off the first two. The annual beds, just let it grow. Um, you know, the forest garden, we've talked about, we've talked about it a need for clearly defining what's going on there. In ENF, nothing's happening until we approve either a request for donation. So it would order. really just be the forest garden? Is that the... Well, I'm looking at the abandoned annual beds too, because Downey's management suggestion is seed with a cover crop, remove wood chips where necessary, mow to control weed vegetation. So that's kind of open for interpretation. If someone says, well, I'd like to do X, Y, and Z, and this is my interpretation of, a, of what a cover crop should be. That could be very different from somebody else's idea. And, but I think that I just my authorization to you would be there's no harm by doing nothing there. So if you are not comfortable as staff that it's not a benefit, then you could say, no, we're just going to let it grow. So can the commission say that until we have an, an MOU that, that defines that, that nothing should how about you say that? That's okay. that's, that's yeah. good. I mean, something better. Yeah. Not for the forest garden, but but for, for the for, for the race bed, yeah. Um.
because uh, and for the forest garden, I would think that um, there's a, a, a short list of activities which Paige could probably you know, list quickly that need to be done to keep it healthy, and right. um, that it could also help to find the boundaries. The boundaries, and that if you are uh, agreement that okay, you know, two hours a week to do X, Y, and Z, then that's your call uh, delegated by the commission and uh, at some point um, a proper and complete MOU might supplant that but right now we're, that, that's what it is. I have a trouble with the time limits. Someone going to be standing there with a stopwatch and go? No, but the expectation should be that if it's, you know, um, it's an order of magnitude question. You know, it's not somebody showing up every day for right. as long as they hang out is different from expecting that no, twice a month there'll be somebody there for a couple of hours. Right. It's a, okay. it's well, not, I don't think it's a time hours. Not, not a stopwatch question, yeah. but just a, an order of magnitude question. And again, the uh, this is in the, the broader context, and I will uh, I, I will write an email to. Uh, uh, Maria Jane Potter and the other MC3 people that I've communicated with about our earlier um, uh, recommendation that they be coordinated in volunteer activity and say that we have uh, reconsidered that and that we're not going to, as a commission, coordinate any uh, current volunteer activity. Uh, so I'll, since I was the communicator of that prior message, I'll, I'll write an email. Okay. to clear that up and that you're going to be the point person for um, any uh, volunteer activity in the near future. And uh, we'll be, we, uh, I'll also in that email let them know that we have this meeting uh, more clearly articulated the intended parameters of the MOU we've asked you to negotiate. Okay. All right, anything else on this topic? Um, I have a question about, so should I meet with Sarah about um, the itemization of tasks? Um, I think if, if you have a, uh, a list of uh, things to propose, uh, yeah, I think okay. they're important on the Just to really, in, in the spirit have, of I'm doing it, I'm expecting that it's I just the forest guard. Is the, the, uh, One thing that we had uh, talked about earlier was that I would side the strip. Um, that is now called F, part of, you know, the, the 50 foot, 165 foot long strip that is behind Jim and Doris. And, and um, for? Um, that is an area that I have brought forth and, and worked on developing the soil structure. And uh, rather than having that area mown, and I've also kept the sumac down in that area um, for purposes other than what the, um, MC3 had in mind, but nevertheless, it did achieve a common goal. Uh, my inclination would be to make this for now as limited as possible, and that we just focus on the forest garden. And we let, okay. We let this the has three forest garden trees in it, and part of the goal for scything was to um, ensure that those trees didn't get encroached upon, so that they had uh, sunshine and you know. Uh, you know, an area. I, I took the side things the last time I did it, and just most. Is this, them are these three trees contiguous with the rest of the forest garden, or separate? Um, they are. They were the beginnings of a new bed. Um, I've been asked to um, provide some screening from Jim and Do from uh, Ben and Una's property. Both parties um, had hoped um, for some screening there, and uh, so these trees are small, very small, and. Um, yeah, are they, are they movable or is it defined? I mean, I'm trying to make sure that we have clear boundaries and not get back into the different interpretations by different people question. Uh, okay, I, well, I don't think that this would be uh, difficult to include in the D. How, physically, how far from the rest of the forest garden? Um, 10 feet. Then why don't we just define that as part of what's included? and say that's the forest garden and all we're doing right now is maintaining the forest garden 
It includes these three trees. So that we don't want to lose the forest for the trees. Uh, <laughs> uh, I can tell you, Richard. I couldn't help myself. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're working on that. Uh, so, so, so this is a related. This is a related question. Then, so uh, you have these. Do you have the hundred foot buffer marked with flagging. No, I have fifty. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. That's so no. So it, it, you are would you would be within the hundred foot as you get down. Now that's mostly sumac down at that end and some of the four roads. In the yeah, and so that's not including the trees that they're just talking about. Sumac is right. not. Presumably, the paint is not invasive. No, it's not. No, it's not. No. It's not. It's not. Well, I'm wondering about flagging it could or be some kind of clear yeah. designation of the forest garden at some point. Well, so not like two minutes. Did you do any any flagging of the forest no, garden? No, I wouldn't so. know uh, where it started and ended without the person who planted it. So. Right. Walk. So it seems like to what walking that boundary. Walking it with Paige and yeah. finding And it sounds like if it's just ten feet or so, it's not a big deal, right? It's a no. small area. So that, that'll be that'll be resolved when we walk the boundary of that. And I'm happy to go down as well. She'll have to meet a commissioner or um, mm -hmm. Sarah down there and, okay. and walk in to find the green flagging. Can be done sometime in the next several days? Sure. Can I coordinate that, sir? By walking with the, um, so we can define the sure. limits physically of the forest garden, and in a lot, all likelihood, include those three new trees. You and take at that off. point, it probably so we if you could have written on page what your recommendations are for yeah. mm -hmm. proper for maintenance of the forest garden, yeah. um, then uh, I think get that to say. We need a 200 foot tape on the north. What was that? We need a 200 foot tape. Yeah, we'll go with that. That would be good. No, <laughs> yeah, I don't have a wheel. I've got, got the 200 foot tape. I have a wheel. Oh, okay, that's even better. Any further on this topic? I go on with the agenda. <laughs> uh, agricultural preservation restriction application, fair speed extension? So I mentioned that it's not a very nice looking application that the state puts together. Um, but I talked about this a little bit in the staff report. It's just that description, yeah. Yeah, all I saw was this thing. Yeah. That's the only thing, right? That's, that's it. Yeah. That, that's all that we you know about it. So basically, we're just saying to the state, yes, this is in accordance with our open space plan. We think it's a good idea. If needed, we would be willing to contribute some of the cost. Yeah, which, which we could take from the cost. We've always been in favor of APRs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not too. In fact, we have what? Two or three of them currently in Northampton. Uh, that the Conservation Commission holds, or in, or in total? In total, there's quite a few. Uh, that the Commission's involved with. Yeah. One is the Brothers, almost in the East Hampton. Uh, Part of Mineral Hills. There's a couple other ones. But there's, there's a lot of them in the meadows, and this would fit into that plan mm -hmm. nicely. So do we need a, we need a motion? Can I just have, quite, I have a question. Sure. The total cost is anticipated to be quite low. What is that? Very low. Well. I mean, really like, well. you know, Mitt like Romney in the hundreds said, or I'll the bet you $10,000, uh, <laughs> and that was quite low. But. <laughs> For him, right, it's all about it. I mean, is it, is it in the scale of $1,000, or? Probably not much more. Not, okay. Yeah. A few thousand, for, maybe 2000 per acre. Yes, and it, they have to do an appraisal to figure out exactly what it would be, but it's not a buildable property at all. Right. So there wouldn't be much development value. Yeah. And it is, so here's 91, and it's, it's this piece. Wow. Looks like it's planted in row crops, whatever that picture was taken. Until for yeah, this was last one. Alrighty, a motion. Do we need some kind of motion? Or we do. Or just we a need a I move that we support the APR application for the Fair Street extension. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, next item is open space acquisition update. Uh. 
one thing to pass around, this isn't really an update, but this is the conservation restriction that I emailed everyone about to stop by and sign. Um, Tim stopped to sign. Oh, nobody did. Did I forget to stop I didn't have a way of getting down here. So this was approved by the Conservation Commission in January of last year. So this is just the final culmination and actually signing things and, and getting it wrapped up. So, so which, which parcel? This is, this was kind of a complicated acquisition. It's a, it's a trade piece um, oh. in Leeds, yeah. part of the Mill River Greenway. Yeah. So yeah. We, we took this through back taxes and then right. the neighbor acquired it. Yeah, and we ended up with a different piece of property. Uh, we, we ended up with a conservation restriction on this piece. And then the name will hold it. Yeah. I remember that. So I'll send that around. And... Have you been sworn in yet? I have. Yeah. That's good. And me, you know, otherwise. That's what you can set the table. <laughs> All right. And let's see, just one other piece on the Brockbrook Gap. The, the Community Preservation Committee unanimously approved $290,000 to that oh, purchase. And I sent in an application to the Forest Service for acquisition, and we'll also be applying for a land grant. So hopefully we'll make all those pieces fit together somehow. And, and that'll be for that piece that we looked at last time that fits in between Fitzgerald Lake and and it goes better. Yeah. Um, and the Kestrel conservation restriction, we, we're working towards finalizing the CR on the, the CPA acquisitions. We've got a determination that we have to place a CR held by a third party on all the acquisitions funded in whole or in part through the CPA. So we, uh, we were working with Kestrel to get a CR on those. And they would like to prohibit snowmobiles and, and ATVs on all of those properties. So as sort of a compromise, would it, the commission be okay including a clause that allows them on historic trails and prohibiting them elsewhere? So this wouldn't be a change from our current practices, but it would limit our options for these properties in the future. Um, so the, how does that affect the continued use of the headwaters parcel by the Burby Bones. That would be a, a grandfather piece. Okay, so because that's, that's a historic trail. So they're so they're allowing so if the commission decided that, that was that was a okay, so snow we bills, include, snow then, bills then we would make it clear that it was just snow mm -hmm. But that would take away a lot of the there is one other options piece, the Jeep thing that we allow. The they're, not, they're not taking the SCR on Jeep Peter. We already figured that might oh, be too right. complicated. <laughs> hey, can you just explain why, why does that limit? I'm not kidding. If it's in the conservation restriction, that would be a, a permanent restriction and the commission would never be able to go back and say, well, this would oh, be a really great snowmobile trail that's allowed snowmobiles here. It limits the addition of snowmobiles. Yeah. Oh. Not on future acquisitions, only on these, on these, particular, on these particular properties. But the uh, Kestrel would prefer that we just prohibit all use, yes. ATV and snowmobile use. I mean, I, 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 as Mason said, you know, once there's snow cover, you know, that's frozen. I'm, I'm not so worried about it, other than the audio annoyance. I'm not so worried about the habitat impact of, of uh, snowmobiles, but ATVs and, and dirt bikes cart the hell out of stuff. I, I'm not sure. Well, I think, I think and we don't allow ATVs currently, anyway. But but that could change if the commission decides. So, oh, so this is, just, this is just a belt and suspenders kind of. Yes. We, yeah. we, if it were in the restriction, that it would be permanent. I think Kestrel's fear is that they'll go out and carve out new trails right. through the woods and if you've ever walked through a section of woods that's been marked for snowmobiles, there's different colored tags hanging all over the place. So, so if we, uh, uh, by the compromise you're suggesting, say no new but only historic use, 
And, and then define those. Yeah, yeah. Historically, we don't allow ATVs. Uh, so this is. We would be saying we, we allow ATV use is not permitted. We allow snowmobiles on historic trails yeah. and, that, and then list the trails. That seems right. Yeah, I also throw in off-road bikes or whatever the heck they call them. Those are really tough to, to manage. Can we limit it to just say only snow, historic snowmobile trails? That was what they had suggested, yeah. Yes. Because we, uh, since I've been here, we've, we've allowed it at the Beaverbrook Broad Brook piece, and, and I think there may be a couple of others. Uh, allow ATV use or no, 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 it's no, no, it's right in our standard right. uh, maintenance for our properties. No, we just motorized vehicles, no. mm -hmm. you know, with the exception of some of the except for the GP, of course. Yeah, the, the issue is more about taking away options right. in the future. The 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 Where did they stand with timber extraction? Um, do they you using the standard conservation restriction? I believe so, yeah. So they're still allowing the conservation restriction, the, con the conservation commission to retain that ability yes. to. Okay. What do you think snowmobiles only? I mean, is that the I'm still confused about the decision we're making. Well, if it goes into the I mean, I say they have nothing but snowmobiles, and personally, uh, be fine restricting snowmobiles, but that's a public relations issue, and it has very minimal impact. That I'm willing to say, okay, that's okay on historic parcels. Mm -hmm. right. And I say nothing else in terms of motorized vehicles. Is there another? Just for one well, the commission isn't making a, dis a new decision about snowmobile use by doing this. It would be eliminating any potential new trails in the future because We're tying the hand of future yeah. commissions. Yeah. yeah. That if I feel fine that you know, even if 100% of the people in Northampton decided that they love snowmobiling and they wanted an extension of snowmobile trails, we'd say it's not within our power anymore. Right. We yeah. gave away that ability. Mm -hmm. So, accepting the trails. Except I, mean, I can see an issue. Are specified. Right, yeah, I can see an issue in the future where you'd say you have this historic trail that you actually don't like very much and you want to change it to another area. Like have it go around something or over a different area, that, that would restrict your ability to yes. say, that's a bad place for a snowmobile trail. Let's move it over here. You know, I don't want to put the bridge over that stream crossing. I want to put it over up here. And I can see that being an issue. Yeah, and it would still allow the commission someday in the future to say, no, we don't, we don't want these snowmobile trails at all. So, so they'd still be able to do that, but they wouldn't be able to change them around. But what Tim's saying is that the wording, if the wording is attaching, yeah. attaching what is preserved as that particular snowmobile trail, but snowmobile use of a particular parcel. Right? If you if you word it so that you know, you say we want to preserve the right to allow snowmobile use on the headwaters parcel, because like you said, we find out five years from now that that's a bad place it's it's a trail. We'd like to relocate it, but still allow the historic use. So. Yeah, that's a, that, that's that's probably yeah. so prohibit well, motorized vehicles from all areas accepting snowmobile use in the following. I, yeah, I'm not limited to the limited to the parcel. Limited to the parcel, right? It's historically on the historical, but not necessarily the, to stay silent on the specific trail. Okay. Aspect. Right, because you might even get into an issue if you want to relocate a bridge, right? Because right. they did, they had yeah, relocated the bridge on that trail, right. and so that would become yeah. an issue with whether the restriction would allow you to do that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Motion. How do we make the motion? Do we want to specify the language, or do you want to read the language? or the sense that you're... Uh, the, that the commission is approving that the language motorized vehicle use is, or something that's in fact, motorized vehicle use is prohibited in all conservation areas except snowmobile use is allowed in the following right. parcels. And those will be areas where and the this is already allowed it. this is specific to, to the, the, the areas for which the Kestrel holds the yes. district. So, okay. Good discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So good.
Do you grant any permits these last couple of weeks? I have not. Right. But we do have mail. Oh, we do. Um, anybody wants to take a look at it? We got a notice of definitive subdivision approval for Kensington Estates. This was the one that yeah. the commission did the order of resource area delineation for like two years ago on West Hampton Road. It connects West Hampton Road. Remember, we changed it to an intermittent street. Yes. yes. Because of the language in the yeah, and now and they and now that means that they can go forward without going through the conservation commission essentially yes. because the buffer zones have changed until until that expires next summer. What expires? Until the resource area delineation expires. Oh, 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 I see. So they would have to come back for so an extension, three -year extension. Window, which may not be granted. If there's no extension, they'd have to reapply for that. Right. So. There's no extension on that determination. Well, no, it's an order of resource area. Oh, okay. But there's an extension for that. So unless their construction is done by next July, we'll be seeing them again in some way. Yeah. Um, a yearly operations plan for vegetation maintenance for Tennessee gas pipeline. Yearly operations plan for Where's vegetation that right maintenance. Right away, yeah. gas pipeline. Yes. After the Ewing property. <laughs> Remember that? The <laughs> line goes through across the middle of the The Hampton line lines comes up. Uh, yeah. Starts up at almost so the model Tauruses and goes right down across uh, farm fields and then across uh, Florence Road where the Ewing property is. Where they had to get the soil scientists up there to yep. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Um, another notice of a yearly operations plan for Pan Am Railways, um, but before they do any spraying, we do need to confirm their, their resource markings, and there are no spray markings on the railroad ties, and I'll be going out at 10 we tomorrow to the Expo. Well, we denied it last oh, year because right. we didn't agree with their, with their markings. So if anybody wants to... Do I get to ride local? I don't think so. I, I did ask for that last time. And Do I get to ride a truck that rides wheels? <laughs> I have to walk. <laughs> yeah. I think we have to work. Yeah, so meet me at 10 at the Oxbow. At the parking lot by the boat ranch. Yeah, I'll see if my meeting, my earlier meeting. So I made an email. All right, we'll do. Um, an invitation to Kevin specifically, but I assume to everyone. Um, <laughs> the opening day at Florence Organic Community Garden. Memorial Day, and then last thing. For some reason, we got a copy oh, this, this of a, is, this is the new a request for determination of applicability submitted to Hatfield. <laughs> 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 because little did they know we're annexing Hatfield. <laughs> well, there's there's several uh, permits that came before us where. Right. Entrance was in Hatfield, but the back part of the product. Uh -huh. Well, this is for um, fiber optic cable installation. And then the day after we got this, we also got a full request for determination for work in Northampton, which will be on the agenda. Yeah, that's yeah, good. I remember that part still on the Yeah. And yeah. It was like a little yeah. corner of the ditch. Yeah. Anything else? That is it. Let's. Uh, Take a few minutes to um, meet Steve and you know, talk about our backgrounds. Uh, I guess the meeting is officially a meeting at this point. Um, that I, uh, and, uh, I'll, I'll go first. I'm, I'm the only uh, person without any technical background at all in this area. Um, uh, everybody else knows something. Um, <laughs> Um, but I uh, um, have always been a, a science hobbyist and an uh, 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 avid outdoors person, so um, this is an area of interest, but not any professional training at all. Oh, come on, you probably um, jog through what? Uh, that's right. <laughs> what about resource management? You've done resource management in Vermont. Well, that's true. more strict. That's true. That's true. Well, I'm, I'm president of a, a 
association of Vermont has 400 acres of it. That's another experiential piece, not no, no professional training, basically I'm just a, a corporate guy that I retired a few years ago and have finally the time, I've lived here since 1977, but this is the first time in the last few years when I've had time to actually get involved in my own town. So. I love your town. <laughs> so, but the ones you, the rest of you talked about, you, you actually are trained in this stuff, you know? No? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Tim, I, I, I teach Westfield, I teach in the biology department and environmental science, and I have a forest ecology background, so my background is really not in wetlands, but except for the ways in which forests interact with them. In case you need, I have a copy of the best management practices, <laughs> which was hard to get. <laughs> uh, and uh, Danny and I have taught at the community college, state college, middle school, and high school science and biology. And uh, I also was way back, a long time ago, environmental insurance lawyer. So I was familiar with the federal federal environmental law, CERCLA, and RICRA, and Mining Recovery Act, and all that good stuff, so it just helped me pick up on some of the regulatory pieces in that. <laughs> yes, and I, and Kevin's picked up, you know, when he's ready to have the vote, and I'm looking hard at <laughs> yeah, I, I tend to waste a lot of the commissions. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, my name is Mason, and I've just been on the commission a long time. <laughs> well, so, do, do you care to elaborate how long? <laughs> 36 years. Um, I have a uh, degree in. Uh, Wildlife biology uh, a long, long, long time ago. Um, I have, when I'm not, when I wasn't looking at notices of intent as a commissioner, I was preparing them as a consultant for an engineer, a small engineering company in Westfield. And uh, quite a few of the towns around there, I was the guy standing here presenting notices of intent to commissioners. First, let me thank you for a very interesting meeting. <laughs> I did, I enjoyed it. This is um, not unusual, not quite to believe really it. So I've lived in the Valley for 33 years, just a year here in Northampton. Spent most of my time up in Asheville, where I still own property. Um, Beautiful and town. In Asheville, I was on the school committee for more than a dozen years. I was the chair of the Sanderson Academy Building Committee that we opened in 1997. And I was on the planning board for five years. That, that tells you that I'm involved in local politics or local governance, and I believe strongly that every citizen should do something like this. And so I chose the Conservation Commission. In my working life, I was a naturalist. When I said this to Kevin, when I met him some weeks ago, I think he thought I was a nudist. Naturalist. But in fact, I spent a lot of time working in nature, nature centers. Um, I was recently at Amherst College uh, running their education programs at the Naturalist Museum and ran the planetarium. And if any of you are uh, avid gazette readers, I know there are just a very, few left. Very familiar with I wrote a column for five or six years. On nature. That's Great. What I, do. I used to walk with you down to the river by your house. Your observations <laughs> of the Boeings, and I still think I remember the was it the white birch that came down. Yes, the yes, the beaver took it down. Yes, yeah. we were dealing with beaver issues. <laughs> I still <laughs> weep over that. Yeah. That tree's absence still affects me. Yeah. <laughs> well, welcome aboard. Um, well, thank you. Glad to have you. This is. Uh, um, and actually an, an interesting and enjoyable group of people to work with. Lisa, who is uh, not here, is a, a, a former environmental police officer um, and yes. now local business person. Uh, 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 she, I don't know why, but missing this meeting. She didn't elaborate. Um, uh, <laughs> we'll get to meet her next time. So, Generally uh, speaking, uh, second and fourth um, uh, Thursdays of the month, uh, although in the summer we often decide to meet once a month. And right. I imagine that will get be something we decide either next meeting or the meeting after that. Uh, whether, we, whether we've got a lot of applications coming in and need to meet twice or we'll go back to a monthly 
early summer schedule. August 1 in weeks ago, and I was fully prepared to come to the meeting two weeks ago. That wasn't. That wasn't. <laughs> yeah. But it, it hasn't been very busy in terms of permits. There's a lot of big ones coming. coming. Really? Yeah, when I, when I, I, I'm retired, but I was kind of forced to because the building market tanked, and our, our company mainly um, developed plans for subdivisions um, for when we weren't. <laughs> no longer developing plans for subdivisions. We no longer needed a guy to hang out around swamps. And <laughs> so uh, they, they finally, uh, I was kind of forced to leave. I was only coming in about two days. My wife retired, so there was no way we were going to make it on her retirement. And my two days a week, so I retired. But I was close enough to mandated retirement age anyway. So. Um, this is the first community I've ever worked in that I felt that I wanted to contribute something to the community. It's, it's been wonderful over 30 years. 36 years worth, right? Yeah, that's how I thought it was. And you know, I'll ask you. And this, you don't have school committee tonight? The school committee tonight. So, okay. This is a leisurely you think so. Walk around and enjoy. All right, well, right. Um, welcome. Glad to have you on the commission. We are adjourned. 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 We are adj